Hello and welcome back to everyone who's kind of familiar with what I'm doing here. To those who are not, to those who are just joining us, thank you for joining us. Welcome. My name is Gwendolyn Brown. I'm the daughter of Cody and Christine Brown from Sister Wives. And what I'm kind of doing is watching the episodes and recounting how I felt in that time and kind of my experience as somebody who's not really part of an FLDS community anymore, especially as somebody who's on the entire other spectrum of that, being queer and autistic and also not being married to a man with multiple other wives. Uh, and then we don't talk about this much, but being kind of a subject in a reality television, pardon. And I just want to kind of recount what I was going through in this situation and maybe if I had no idea what was going on. So I will be watching season 17, episode two now, and this is going to be my first time watching it. So what you're seeing is what I'm also seeing for the first time. Despite our best efforts to follow all the CDC guidelines, my boys ended up getting COVID, and as much as we tried to contain that, the rest of us all got COVID. But they survived it pretty well. It's COVID, I mean. They've always been pretty healthy, so. It didn't transfer to the rest of the family, and we are fine. So by containing each household, I, I think we were successful in keeping it from spreading to all the other households. Oh, so Christine is... <laughs> He's actually in the closet. Represent! Just before Christine took off for Utah, I went over and talked to her about finding my boxes of my stuff in the garage. You know, Christine and I went through That's kind funny. of a whole discussion recently about how... Um, yes, Padre, tell us your feelings. Uh, I, I'm never there. Well, I'm like going, you're always traveling during COVID. And she says... But he's not here any more than he was before. He's not here any less. It's the same. Truly, he's not even noticed it. But it's weird when wives are like, where are you? What are you doing? And I'm like... He's going. He's going. <laughs> He's going. From the first time that I even met Cody, he has always been like high energy and everywhere. She's a runner. She's a track star. He's just running. You know what? This is just who he is. Different people think that Cody is not being fair with his time and he really actually is. They're just not tracking it because He's going. they're struggling. That's why I have a nanny, so that I can have her help me instead of trying to ask Cody to help with the kids. It's not really fair of me to ask him to help when he has so many responsibilities. I mean, to be fair, he's still a father. He's still part of the family. I literally have Christine telling me that the kids don't think I want to be around him. I've stayed home all year. That's where my confusion comes in. Because Robin did say, he's going. I'm sorry, that was so funny. She's hilarious. It's hard to see just such a contrast with Cody, how he is at Robin's house versus how he is at my house. He's just disengaged at my house. My kids and I hike all the time. Yeah, it's not actually travel. It's like hanging out as a family. Cody came hiking with us once and he brought Robin's kids because he was babysitting them. It was still fun. It's not normal for me to babysit my kids. The idea of kayaking and stuff like that is not something I really do. I'm good at watching my kids, but I almost never do it. It's easier for me to pay somebody 20 bucks an hour than to lose $200 an hour. But we're your children. I feel like that'd be more important than money. The good news is Savannah is out of the woods. She's over her COVID. Yeah, she survived fine. I'm pretty sure she's actually doing great. She looks great, so. But I'm thinking I'm gonna be able to go over to Janelle's house in just a couple of weeks and be able to stay there again. As I understand it, this is what Janelle is telling me. She can't get it. I can get it. And now we're realizing more than ever before during COVID how much one person's actions can affect the rest of the family. Yes, Cody's actions are in fact hurting the whole family, it's true. <laughs> it's weird, when I hear my dad, my dad, when I hear my dad talk about it, I'm like, oh yeah, he makes total sense. And then when I hear my mom talk about it, I'm like, what? That's so unfair, that makes no sense from him. I'm like on each of their sides when each of them are talking about it. Not that I should be choosing sides because those are my parents. Cody's been at my house a lot just by default because of the decisions that other wives are making. What? I love Cody dearly, but this is not what I chose. So it's not like it's really fun to have him around that much anyway. He's um, an angry man right now. Shit, that's scary. I miss my husband. <laughs> I'm sorry, I shouldn't laugh. The aerial shot's funny though, to be fair. <laughs> I'm afraid I'm on the edge of l losing my and I'm afraid she's on the edge of losing her She is the doorway, the passage for me to get to my children. 
there's been a lot of introspection I've had on this. We're not supposed to break up. Maybe it's okay for well, me to move on. You know? I, it's, a, it's a real paradigm shift for me. She's being very patient, and I appreciate that. Or I'm sure he appreciates that. And, and letting I'm me go. I'm worrying that I'm making a mistake. Is this going to damage our children? I've been in this different paradigm that there would finally be a breaking point and we'd get counseling. For Christine, she's out. It's been months since the conversation. That was a really hard conversation to watch. If he was interested in therapy, he could have said something. When you finally decided, though, did you feel relief? Yes. Oh, that was a fast-ass answer. I want to apologize for being so angry. And I just said, Christine, what do you want? And you said, I just want to be free. There's Miles Q. Thank you. That's Bye. very sweet. I'm really grateful that he's not mad and not angry it feels like just this major injustice that is being done to me to me and it galls me to me done to me your freedom thank you that's like the sweetest thing that you've ever said by the way but i think what's healthy for us and what's healthy for our family is me leaving i've only said it a couple times if you're not happy here you can leave i didn't expect that you're not happy here with me, <laughs> you're going to leave. He said, if it isn't the consequences of my own actions. Isabel and I went to her surgery, just the two of us. Oh, shit. We're going here. The doctors were telling Isabel that your daddy's going to be here soon. And I'm like, he's not coming. And then I realized, actually, I can do this by myself. Ah, good for her. She's so cute. That's adorable. No shade. I hate that photo shoot so much. I think I still see my mom more than I see my dad, even when she lives in Utah. I'm married to two divorced women. I know what their opinion is of that guy. I notice my mom's the only one that hasn't been legally divorced. How exciting is that? That means I'm a bastard. Because they were never married. It's okay, you don't have to laugh. I don't want her going around the country telling people that I'm a bad person. <laughs> Are you fine with me moving away to Utah? Not really. Where do you think you're going to move to? Salt Lake area. That's where her family is, so. See, that's eight hours away. Do you have to move that far? Yes. <laughs> yes. St. George isn't is gross. Enough. I would never move to St. George. Yeah, that's valid. St. George is gross. No hate to people that like St. George, because like I know people go there for the heat, but it sucks. Full disrespect. Oh, perfect. They cut out the photo almost the best way. Men don't win in the divorce world. I've done my research. I'm pretty sure men do win, actually. I feel like statistically men are more likely to win because people, because like judges are like, oh, women are more likely to win. But in truth, I'm pretty sure men are more likely to win, even though women are typically more active. I don't have any evidence to back this up, though. So I would have to research more into it. I have always loved you, but I have not been in love. My mom had a lot of bitches lined up the block, too. She was kind of a hot commodity back in the day. And you were my first love. And so you're always going to be a part of my heart. I feel unmanly. I don't want my other wives to see me as weak. So I don't want to talk about it to them. Janelle knows more than anyone. At least polygamy brought Janelle and my mom to be besties. So, and me. It brought me too. No one knows that I'm actually leaving. What does that mean to be a sister wife then? Am I still a sister wife? But you're still besties. How not very close I am with Robin and Mary is gonna stay like that. I thought I, I always thought my mom and Robin were like really close when the show first started. They seem to be chaotic together. Let's tell the wives because I want to be honest with them really badly. You know, at least she's being optimistic about it. This is a really hard thing to do. I, I, I'm in a place where I don't know what to say. Isabel really wants to move to North Carolina. She was just accepted to one of the colleges there. I don't even know how this works. You're doing great. Madison Brush is connecting to audio and can't. <gasps> Madison! Yeah, I just wanted to let you know I for sure am moving to North Carolina. <laughs> for sure, for sure. I love the audio cut out for a second because they were all cheering. That's so cute.
When I decided that I needed to leave Cody, I knew I wanted to talk to Maddie. She just said, you're always going to be a grandma to my Aww. kids, always. Can I help you? Is my dog? That's my baby, Noelle, it's you. Garrison, who, who I asked to move out of the house probably six months ago. Move out. He finally bought himself a trailer to move in. Garrison doesn't move out. He gets COVID. He gives it to all of Janelle's kids. Besties. Not to brag, but I never got it because I have no social life. He's a grown-ass man. He can move out of the house. He's the one that can't be an adult and go get a place. I mean, Dane still lives at home. He doesn't have a problem with that. Let's admit it, everybody. It's real. And those people who don't think it is real just are being stupid about it, okay? I, I have never told Cody that I think it's fake. COVID is real. I had <laughs> Wait, it. I had COVID. It's real. I love they're all saying it's real. <laughs> he was like, it's real, you guys. And then everybody agrees with him, despite him thinking they don't. That was funny. Isabel still got to tell her dad that she's going to be moving to North Carolina. Hey, baby. Hey, what's going on? I just wanted to tell you that. So, um, I applied for Pitt Community College. Yeah. You got into college in North Carolina. Yeah. And it's not going to be expensive? It's not expensive at all. I think he's like, with all the talk about money, he's realizing how expensive it is to have so many kids. It's funny. I hate being excited about you leaving. <laughs> that sucks. Yeah. I really thought she'd stay here in Flagstaff. I'm excited for you. Yeah. I yeah. hope you're happy about your day. My mom's cute for lifting the phone up and filming the hug. I, I talked to Gwendolyn. I told Gwendolyn, look, um... Well, actually, it was kind of adorable. You know, things are but like bad between Dad and I, and I'm leaving Dad. And I want to move to Utah in September. I remember that. I was like, you're leaving? Good for you. She told me that she was moving and also divorcing my father at, like, the same time. So I was just, like, all hype for her. Because, like, obviously I love her and obviously I visit her all the time. But, like, she's got, she was going home and I was happy for her. And I didn't really love the relationship that they had. And she's doing really great now. So I spent my whole life trying to be the hero for my kid, doing everything I could to be there for them. And now because of this COVID situation, they're trying to make me the villain because of COVID. I don't think it was because of COVID, though. I think that's just like an easy scapegoat. Because scape I want to protect my children. That's fair. All right. Beautiful. Good episode. I don't think I saw myself at all, so there's not much I can say about my experience in it. But back to when my mom was talking about how she let me know. So she let me know we were like driving to some place. Anyway, she told me and I was like, I kept my face like... I was like, don't show her that I'm super fucking hyped. And then like, I like, I gave her a polite smile and stuff. But like inside I was like freaking out. Like, this is amazing. This is good for her. Like, she's finally gonna, you know, not be free. Cause she wasn't really trapped in a way. Or it didn't feel like for, to me she was trapped. Um, but she's finally gonna be like, free is the best word I can honestly use. And I was so happy for her. And um, and she's always been good at making friends, so obviously Flagstaff wasn't a terrible experience for her. But like, for somebody who's so outgoing and like so like used to being popular and like outgoing and having a lot of friends, it was just sad to like see her stuck in Flagstaff where she wasn't like thriving as I would have hoped she would be. And when she said she was moving to Salt Lake, like. It just clicked. It made sense. Salt Lake is her home. It's always been her home. I think it's like a 20, 30 minute drive from Lehigh where we used to live. So like that area, that's been her community. That's where like her entire part, most of her family lives. Um, her friends, you know, even people that were part of the church who have escaped, who she can like relate to. You can't find that in Flagstaff at all. So I was really happy for her. All right, and now is the time for the burning questions that my patrons on Patreon ask me every single episode. The first one is from the Princess D.Y., the Princess D. Um, uh, Robin and Cody stopped being active on social media a while ago. Are they aware of how most people perceive them and their behavior on the show? I'd say they are probably are aware of how they're being perceived, which is probably why they stopped being so active on social media, you know, with all the hate, um, likely hate. Uh, or they're honestly just busy being parents and busy with their lives to be super active on social media then Rachel who asks or says Mary gets a lot of hate on social media do you think that hate is fair 
I really just don't think that the hate is justified. I don't know why she does or, and I've never really heard about it, but it just seems like she just kind of minding her business and trying to enjoy her life. Um, and especially trying to enjoy her life with all that's going on with the family. I don't know a lot about her online presence, but hate just doesn't seem completely justified. And then Shelly Rosa says, does your dad ever look back and realize the lies he's told based on history and the recorded proof? Also, is there any chance he might see his mistakes and form better relationships with his children? As people, I think that we're all typically ignorant to our mistakes and when we've hurt our loved ones, especially our loved ones, and we're pretty unlikely to admit when we've done wrong. He's not actively reaching out to us. Um, I've had to reach out to him and ask when he's available, but he has been working on it and I think that he is getting better and with time he will get better. Ha. All right, and then Amber Fallsgraf says, which of you kids have watched or are watching the shows? Um, virtually none of us watch the shows. It's kind of stressful from an outside perspective. It's just drama to like the viewers, but to us it's like your family. Um, then she says, and has seeing what we made, uh, seeing what we see made them or me feel any differently about Robin or Cody or anything? So has seeing the way people behave made us feel different about Robin or Cody? Um, I do feel less about Robin from watching this, but I feel like that's not very fair from me because I don't really like her as a person. So it's probably not a completely valid response, but like uh, watching her makes me like her less for sure. All right, and then Mango Tango says, we see Cody being much more ill-tempered and seemingly uncaring in regards to Christine, Mary, and Janelle this season with him spending even more time with Robin around this time due to COVID. Do you know if he was acting this way towards her some too? We haven't really seen Cody and Robin being filmed together, just the two of them with the main focus being on other things. That's true, the main focus has been being on uh, the divorce. In this episode, Robin does point out that she, he's like m more ill-tempered as, as the question mentions and he's meaner and kind of scarier. So I imagine that she's not being getting like the same princess treatment, but I'm sure she's still receiving uh, more and kinder attention from him. Then Jolene Carriera says, in this episode, Robin continues to say that she tried reaching out to Janelle and her kids. She's always saying she reached out to everybody, but she's met with walls. Nobody responds to her calls. However, I've never seen her reach out to anyone. Is she doing it off camera? So Robin's never reached out to me like she claims. Um, I reached out to her on her birthday. I like sent her a happy birthday, um, but she never did the same to me. So from, from my perspective, that's not, you know, the truth is what she claims. But as a, at a recent family event, she did go specifically up to my girlfriend and like introduce herself. And Beatrice does say that she was kind and sweet. And so I appreciate her at least making some sort of an attempt to reach out. Then MJ says, why are the camera crews not filming inside Robin's home anymore? Um, speculations about her being a hoarder, shops. They have so much stuff and it's taking up space. Um, Robin's house is actually really clean from the last time that I saw it, which was like two years ago. So maybe I don't know, but they haven't really filmed inside Janelle's or Mary's houses this, these last two episodes. And I think it's just because my mom's kind of the main focus of the season with the whole divorce. All right. And then Mallory says, or asks, how did you feel about your dad not going with Isabel for her surgery? And how is Isabel doing uh, now? Um, in the no in the moment, I didn't really notice a change. It seemed logical that, you know, since he wasn't really visiting us a bunch at the time, that he wouldn't really come with us to her surgery. But looking back, it's definitely pretty upsetting that I saw that as normal. Isabel's thriving right now. She's doing really well. She's Her back is much better. You know, every day it, like, gets better. Um, and she's healing a lot. All right, then Leanne says, hey, Gwen. Hi, Leanne. I'm curious, has ever, anyone ever confronted Cody concerning Robin's constant state of victimhood? If so, how did he respond? Um, a side note, as a therapist, it, mad, it maddens me so much that Robin calls herself an empath. She projects so much of her anxious attachment onto everyone so self-righteously arg. So we're not confrontational people as a whole, unfortunately, but there has been like gossip like circling around the family that I'm sure has probably reached Cody at one point. And random side note, it feels so weird when people claim that they're empaths. It's like kind of like saying like, oh, I'm super popular. Cause like one, we can tell, we know if somebody's popular and two, like real empaths don't 
walk around telling people they're empaths, you know, like popular people don't walk around telling people they're popular. It's, it's, it's just arrogant. That's totally random, but side note. All right, and then Colleen Levy says, do Robin and Cody know that the viewers do not support them and what are their reactions to the fans' opinions? So they probably know at this point, nobody's really on their side, but um, I think they're just really living their life and they probably don't even care what uh, the viewers think about them specifically uh, in return in relation to the family. All right, so those are all the top questions. If you would like to have any of your burning questions answered, you could go ahead and post them in the next Q&A for the next episode that I will be talking about. And if you'd like to be involved and in the know, you can find Sister Wives episodes on discoveryplus.com. And then a huge thank you to all of my patrons and everybody who took their time to ask questions. Your support is very much appreciated and I hope you have a good time viewing.